Okay, so picking up from our last video, uh, we were building out this Welcome Hero block section. Uh, for this video, we're just going to pick right back up from there and going to continue to build out the home page. This is going to be sort of a feature list section, so let's get started with that. So just picking up from here, um, we've got a new template, and that will just be called Feature List. Uh, and then it's going to have some fields. And actually for this field, we're just going to copy, it's going to be another rich text section similar to the, um, the Welcome Hero. And actually we're also going to copy the links because they're pretty similarly shaped to our features. Um, but they're different enough to where we don't want to reuse that. Um, so we're going to call this Features features List. And then again, the, the, um, the features are uh, on a list of objects, so uh, yeah, so that'll be link, let's just call that label, and looking at our section here, we've got a label and description, and then an icon, um, so let's do that, label, description, and we'll keep these as both strings, um, and actually let's put the icon at the top here. So this one is going to be the icon, and we're going to have some options for it. Uh, the options are going to be basically whatever icons we have in our in our little icon library. So if we go over to our feature component and we look at it, um, we're actually pulling these in from feature icons. And real quick, we'll just pull that in to here. But actually, one quick note, uh, we have a tsconfig uh, field alias here, or path alias. Uh, we don't have access to that information at the Tina level, so we're just going to do a relative import. That's just something to know if you're kind of mixing imports into your Tina config that are coming from, you know, some other configuration you might have in your, in your Next.js site. Uh, that's just something that um, to keep in mind. So feature icons. Uh, yeah, so this is going to crank out the list of feature icons. Um, and then let's see how that looks. If we go and add a feature list item, we've got a message here that would be, you know, something kind of like this. I'll we'll probably, not sure I'll actually end up saving this one or not. Um, and then we've got a feature item, and that's going to choose from the list that we just did. We just did object.keys on, on that that object of our, of our React component there, um, which is a nice handy way to do that. And then um, on the link, and then we've got a description. So save our first item here. Um, and let's get it rendered out just to make sure we're on the right page. So we've got our page component. And then again, similar stuff here. Once you get the first one set up, this, this starts to get pretty easy. Um, and we're gonna return the feature list. And we're going to actually do key. Um, I'll make it one note about this. Uh, in, in, in Tina, a lot of the time, I actually do end up using an index for my key. Um, I know that's an anti-pattern in React, and there's, there may be some good use cases for not doing that. I mean, you're always going to do re-rendering when, when things change. Uh, but, but if it's a content-heavy site and a lot of your stuff is just coming from Tina updating the content, um, I do it a lot, and I've never really run into any issues with it because the change comes from the data itself re-rendering this is not a, a resource intensive process. Um, let me know if you find that to be an, an anti-pattern in a way that actually affects you. Um, it, it's made things a lot easier to just kind of roll through with content heavy sites. Now you never would want to do that like on a sort of site where you've got React that's you know updating from all sorts of places. And I mean, there's, there's great reasons not to use an index for a key, but in this case I've used it a lot and I've never really run into issues. Um, so. Yeah, blame me if you run into some issues doing that. Uh, jumping into Welcome Hero, see we can we can grab the type uh, from our generated top so, type. So this is going to be similar pattern here. If we jump into our features, um, props, what was it? Page blocks feature list, and I did an accidental import there. Um, so that looks okay. TypeScript's happy. And um, here again, Tina Markdown, and the content's going to be message. And the components, again, same sort of story. We're just going to kind of rely on our editors using these 
appropriate headers. If they went and changed an H2 to an H3, then they would run into an issue here. Um, but you can style an H3 as well, you know, so um, there's nothing really stopping you from making this just be something you can co completely control. Uh, H3 and then another P tag. And let's do that. Oof. Okay. So, all right, let's see how we're going so far. All right, so right away we can actually see I accidentally added this feature list to um, above the welcome here, so you can see it's, it seems to be working. Good sign. Um, jumping back down. Okay, so we've got this message. Let's just check that out. Things are working. Yep, looks good. Um, we'll style the data Tina field attributes here in a second. Uh, and then props, actually, it's just going to be features. And that's it, I think. So we'll just have one. Yep. Okay. Adding more, more. Okay. So you can see these aren't the best looking. Uh, as an editor, you might find this a little bit jarring. We'll talk about cleaning that up here in a second. Um, real quick, let's just make this... Um, I think I had one thing I forgot was that it was just like a little byline blurb here, I called it, um, which is hard-coded. Let's fix that. So in the config, another section here. Uh, byline, I don't know, maybe not the best name, but that'll just be a string, and we'll call that services. Oops, feature list, services. Save that. And again, we're using um, types sort of built by the Tina dev process. So this feature list updated automatically. You can see byline was in here just by changing the config, which is a nice way to move quickly. Um, don't have to really worry about too much. Check it, things, things are working okay. And um, one thing about this is that the byline is sort of this component where we're just passing the raw sort of string value into it, getting this to be um, sort of hydrated with with the data Tina field is a little bit annoying because you could either do data Tina field here and how do you pass that data attribute down. Usually I just make a, a name for it. Um, so I've actually already got that. So it's going to be field name and then that's just going to be uh, Tina field and it's props byline. And that's been rendered out already. Um, oh, maybe it hasn't. So I've got the property here, but I haven't used it yet. So data Tina field, and that's props field name. So real quick, looks like that's okay, working well. Um, all right, so where were we here? Tina Markdown, data Tina field. Okay, looks good. And then we'll step through each of these. And that was feature. Uh, you can choose to just leave the properties off if you just want to style the entire feature. And that looks a little bit nicer sometimes when you're just check checking the whole thing. And it'll just pop open the... the the appropriate panel uh, with none of the fields selected. Um, you can dig in more if, if you feel like it, but a lot of time that's that's all that's really needed um, for your editors to sort of get going. So one thing I pointed out is this is not great. Um, and the other thing about this, there's, there's a couple things. One is that there's no way to sort of see what's what here. Uh, the other thing is that these values kind of look crappy when, when you pop them up like this. Whenever you have like a list array array of items it doesn't look very good when when you hit plus and, and it renders out and there's nothing there so we're going to talk about fixing both of those things here um, with Tina you've got a UI property and in here there's a couple things you can do for list items um, you can provide uh, item props well you can provide item props for any object um, but with that you get an item as a callback and so if there's an item for you know, for every item, this is going to be called for the properties, and you can return a label. And if the item has got, let's see, what was the value? Maybe label here. 
um, that would obviously make sense to use. So in this case, when we do that, we'll see um, in our feature list. Let me move this back down to where where it belongs. Um, here, if we open up feature list, okay, so now we see the, the Llama Link app is the, the label here. It makes it a lot easier. Um, but then when you go to add new items, it's just going to be the default because there's no, there's no label yet um, that we're using. So another thing we can do here is default item. And this is just going to be when we create a new item in a list, what do we want that value to be? So for the icon, I'm just going to choose um, featured icons. Um, grab the first one. Let me grab the, I want the key. So object keys, grab the first icon there. Um, and then label. Uh, llama feature. And then description. So when we do default item here and we add a new item, um, that's just going to pop open automatically. It looks a little bit better. You could maybe have a little bit longer text so it matches the kind of content you're adding. Um, one thing again here, as I was saying about the using using properties for for lists and keys, is when we go when we go over to our features, um, we're using the index here again. I mean, if we were using the feature dot label, that would actually run into a key problem because uh, we're you know defaulting it to the same value. You could use like a, a unique value every time you create a new one with like a faker JS library or something like that um, to create new fake data if you wanted to, to avoid that kind of problem. Um, but this is pretty good. It's looking pretty nice for our editors to kind of work with. And it's using the label. Now all these labels are the same, but if we went and changed it, you'll see these are starting to be a little bit different. Another sort of awkward thing here is that this description is you know, in this case, it's a lot of text and we can't see it. Um, so another customization we can do is we can drop into any field and we can specify the UI here. Um, now with Tina, there are ways to customize your component. We're going to talk about customizing with your own React app, uh, React props, sorry, React components here in a minute. But there's also some built in ones. Uh, one of them is just text area. And that's just going to be a little bit of a nicer way to look at your feature list items. So there, we just made that a text area, which is a little bit more user friendly. Now we didn't make this a rich text element. Um, you know, that's always a choice for you to, you know, to make them. In this scenario, we keep it simple. Um, so with that being said, there's one other um, customization we can do here that would make editing feature lists really convenient and really handy. Uh, is when you click on this as, a, as an editor, you have no idea what that actually looks like. Um, pretty easy to figure it out, but um, still can be a little bit tedious. So the other thing we're gonna do is customize the icon picker. Now this is gonna be a little bit more uh, in-depth customization in the component here. Uh, the way this looks, and I've cheated a little bit because I've, I've got my component ready to go. Um, you can pass a React component here. And not only can you pass a React component here, uh, Tina is styled with Tailwind. So you can, you can use Tailwind classes in your components and we'll pick them up and use them. Um, so that, that kind of works out of the box for you automatically. Um, I did, like I said, I've got an icon select component already set up here. Uh, I think I needed to install this dependency. Um, so this component is just in our Tina folder. It, it can really be anywhere. You can see again, I'm importing the featured icons because this is gonna be the icon picker. So we're gonna display the list of the icons. Um, one interesting thing to note is we've got this helper high order component wrap fields with meta, and that's gonna wrap whatever components in here with the label and any error messages, they're gonna pop up below. So that just kind of takes care of that. So you can just focus on the component styling themselves. Um, I'm using the Radix UI uh, React popover, which is a really nice library. Um, and really, all all we're doing here is uh, we're we're taking the props that Tina gives us, and we're going to um, we're going to call the input on change event, and that is just going to say for this icon change you know change the the icon to this you know to this value. 
So with that being said, um, I've got it installed. I've got my components installed. And then one other thing I'm going to do is, um, or the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do icon selector, and I'm just going to import that. Um, so yeah, you can see component can take some presets. Um, for the most part, you'll probably bring your own. It's pretty easy. And you can also just kind of copy and paste things that, that are sort of core from Tina. Um, a lot of people just pull things out of the Tina library themselves and sort of reorganize them and render them out, um, which is a handy way to, to work. Um, so with that, if we click in here, we can see, okay, now we're seeing the actual icon that's being used. Um, and we can see our list of, of possible icons. As we click, that's calling that on change. And that's really all that happens there. Um, you get a few things out of that that um, out of this this props. Um, so you can see we get a field. That's just going to be a field definition. You can get form information. Input is just going to be sort of like your your standard stuff, like information about what you can do um, on blur, on change. On change is really the main the main thing you're going to care about with this. And then there's like meta information about. Um, the status of that field. Is it an error state? Is it been touched? Has it been, you know, um, there's all sorts of information you can grab and make your co components um, customized. So you can take this really far. Um, it's a pretty powerful feature. With that is also a lot of responsibility here um, because you're now responsible for making sure these fields um, update properly. So um, pretty easy though. You can find a lot of examples um, in our example repos and things like that. So with that, um, one other important note is the TSX ending for that. It's importing React, and it's all sorts of stuff uh, there. Um, but if you use JSX, wherever you use JSX, you're going to have to have a TSX or JSX file extension. That's the way Tina builds and, and knows knows about it. So, um, yeah, so that's the customizations that you can do. Uh, for the most part, you can take those really far, those, those things about basically default items, um, item properties, custom components. Um, this is really how you can lean into Tina and make the editing experience feel unique and sort of cater to, to what your, um, you know, your editors kind of need. Okay. So the next section is a blog reference here. This is just saying kind of like the latest blog posts and, um, it's shouting out for it and you click on this and, and read the blog post. So, um, we're going to sort of move over to the blog section here and we'll come back and style this last block um, once we have some blog posts and some content over there. Um, so that'll be our next video. Uh, it's talking about the blog post collection and uh, dealing with references a little bit, which is uh, where Tina gets pretty interesting and, and uh, really powerful. So with that being said, we'll uh, catch up on the next video and uh, see you there.